Hi everyone, and welcome to Mission Stitch. My name is Emmy, and this is my Floss Tube channel about cross stitch. Um, if you are new here, welcome. So excited to have you. Um, and hope you enjoy what I show on my channel. And for those of you who are returning, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you for all of your love and support. So this is a review wrap up of Mania week four. Um, for those of you who don't know, I did Mania and I worked on a different project each day, which was an experience. Um, I loved it and I hated it for a lot of different reasons. So I loved it because I got to touch all of my whips. So I, I just made sure that I had a different project for each day. So 31 projects. And at the beginning that included, um, 20 whips and 11 new starts. And then I had to do a little change. And so it ended up being 19 whips and 12 starts, which was fine. Um, I was able to pivot really quick and I talk about that on my week three review. Um, I loved being able to touch all of my whips and some of those whips I haven't touched in a really, really long time. And I loved being able to get some progress in on them and falling back in love with them. But it was so hard because then at the end of the day, I was done and I couldn't keep going on it the next day. Now I know I could have, right? But I wanted to be very diligent about um, sticking to my plans and I was. I'm so happy to say that I was successful, but I learned a lot of things. Um, I also learned that I put a lot of maybe unnecessary pressure on myself because I wanted to show some really good progress so that when I posted in my Instagram feed that I could show some a marked difference between the before picture and the after picture. So that was pressure on myself. Um, but I enjoyed having 12 new starts. They were projects that I'd wanted to start for a little while. They were newer want to starts instead of old want to starts, if that makes sense. I, I hope you guys know what I'm just saying. Um, so it was really good, but um, it's just hard because I couldn't keep working on them. And now I have a bunch of projects. Now I did, um, end up finishing two. Uh, and I think I did that the first week. So in reality, I only have tw only, I have 29 whips now. Um, actually I don't, I'll show you that later, but, um, it was really good. The other thing that I really liked about it is that I got really good at taking before pictures and after pictures so that I could see the progress, which was so, just validating really to, cause sometimes you, you know, you guys know that you work on a project and it just doesn't feel like you get anything done on it, especially if you have to frog anything. Oh, that's so frustrating. Right. And I did have a little bit of that, that I had to frog some stuff and put it back in, but, um, that was okay. I still made marked progress on all of my projects and some days I was able to stitch more than others. Um, at the beginning of the month, I was able to do a lot. I had lots of time to stitch, um, about the last week to week and a half. Um, I didn't have quite as much time. So you will probably notice, um, with these projects that I show you that there maybe is not as much progress done on them as, I wanted to. And I have to admit that there was a day or two that I was like, oh, I just don't want to stitch. I'm not in the mood to stitch. I'm not in the frame of mind to stitch, but I have to stitch. So it kind of felt like a chore that didn't last long because I sat down and started stitching and oh, you know, that, that Zen, that calm that comes from when you're stitching and you just, you're in your element and it just feels so good to make some progress and work on something that you love. So it, that didn't last very long, but there were a couple of days that I had to force myself because of my rules that I had set for myself, um, for my mania, but it was okay. Um, I've thought about if I would do it next year, I oh, never say never, right? I don't want to say that I won't do it because I don't want to close off that opportunity, but I think where I stand right now, coming fresh out of it, that I would change a little bit. I would maybe want to do two or three days per project just so I could see some marked difference, um, even more, right? Progress. Um, also I tried to do a mix of small, medium, and big projects. And I feel like I did really good in mixing those, but those, that was probably one of the most maddening things is that those small projects that I could 
um, that I worked on for one day, I could definitely get done in two days. And I had to stop because I only had one day because I had that new project the next day. So I think if I was to do two or three projects or two or three days per project, that that would help as well. So we'll see. We'll see what next year brings. Maybe I'll flip it all and I will do all new starts because I had so much fun starting new things. Um, maybe I will do like a Mirame. Um, I know that some people do that and really love it. And I love watching their progress on their mirrors and what they start and work on. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll do a monogamous May. I know that some people did that and that's fantastic. I would love to do that as well. But then you kind of get burned out on that one project because I've done something very similar to that before. So I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Let me show you what I worked on for the last week. Well, it's 10 days of May, right? Okay. First is Heartstring Samplery. Consider the lilies. And I'm not going to put my before um, photos up. If you want to see those, you can go to my Instagram feed, which is under Mission Stitch. You can find me. And I have posted a before and after photo of every single project that I worked on. So 31 different whips, projects total, whips and new starts. And I've got all of the information down there. So if I forget to share fabric or thread information, um, all of that information is on my Instagram. Okay. All right. So consider the lilies. Now this one I have had as a whip for probably about a year. I am doing it on a 36 count winter's brew by R and R with the called for threads. And this sucker is big. Okay. And did you know, before I show you the called for, um, fabric is a 28 count and it's one strand over two threads. I mean, 28 count guys. Okay. I'm on a 36 count and you're going to see how big it is. So I can't even fathom how big a 32 count would be, but let me show you. My 36 count. Okay. I mean, it's pretty big. So I worked right here. I got this pot done and this um, flower vine. And then I also worked on the border. So when I have a big border like this, um, oh, and I also worked on this middle band. When I have a big border like this, I like to switch back and forth so that I do a length on the border and then maybe a length here and then a length down there or maybe two lengths, one length here, one length here, one there, one there so that I am not left with all of the border all at once so that I can mix it up a little bit. And I find that that system works really well for me. So I did, so I worked here. I did those two worked on those motifs, did some border, and then did, I finished the border on this little band. And I, yeah, for the Consider the Lilies of the Field. So that is my Consider the Lilies. Okay, let me back up and show you the whole thing again. Oh my gosh, I can't even fit it all. There we go. It is big and beautiful. And this is one that if I pressed probably pretty far for a week or two, I could get done. And I might do that, but my June plans are not doing that. So, <laughs> okay. This next one is called Antoinette Dupas, I think. It is by Reflet de Soie. I do not have a um, finished picture because this was in the French sampler box um, from last year by Reflet de Soie. And so, and it didn't come with one. Um, you can still get that box. I noticed that Hobby House Needlework still has that box if you are interested. But it's just a sampler with basic, um, just basic letter sampler. So here we go. So I love this border. And then these letters are beautiful. Now, I have a problem. So if you can see, there are little dots in the letters and it called for green. So when I first started this, I wasn't going to do the green. And I started this last summer, last July. And it is on 40 count French lace, I think, linen. Anyway, so, but when I picked it up for this, um, for Mania, I decided, okay, I'm just going to fill in the green because I added all these little flowers in, these little flower motifs that are in the letters. And I don't love it because this is actually, uh, let's see if I can get a good picture. This color is actually a really deep red, but the green makes it look brown. And I hate that. So I am wondering, do I leave it? Do I pick out all of those dots and then fill it? I could fill it with either kind of a white cream or I could use the light pink from these little buds. Let's see, focus, there we go. 
So I don't know. What are your thoughts? Like from back here, I mean, those letters are really so beautiful. But up close, those green dots and the brown, I just, do I just not care if it's brown? Maybe I don't care if it's brown. I don't know. Tell me what you think. This is one I probably won't touch again for a while, which is a bummer because it's really pretty, but there's just too many projects that I want to work on, right? <laughs> okay, next one. Um, I was very diligent um, about doing my, I have four chatelaines in progress and I was very diligent about doing them on Wednesdays because there were five Wednesdays in May. So this Wednesday, um, I worked on the blue Moroccan lace mandala which is just stunning. I love all those shades of blue and then on the white, it just pops. And then you get all of your crystals and beads on there. It's going to be stunning. All right, so let me show you where we are at here. Okay, here we are. So I did a ton of, so I worked and filled all of this in and I got a ton of the specialty stitches in. You can see all of those um, Jessica stitches, and then down towards the center, all of those eyelet stitches. So everything that is left on this little quadrant is beads. Um, the next time I pick it up, I might add the beads. I don't know, because sometimes you just need a little sparkle to motivate you, right? So I might add the beads, or I might just work on another quadrant. But it's going to be really pretty when it's done, of course. This is just a 32 count white Lugana. Just plain. All right. Okay, next was a new start. Emma Ponquon. I don't speak French. This is a Reflet de Soie. And I love the colors in this. The purples and the greens and then the pansies. Can you see the pansies? They're so pretty. So this one is on oh, Lamb's Wool by, um, from Baiju Designs. And oh, it's upside down, so let me flip it. Just a 40 count. And here's what I got done, a few letters. And then I really wanted to get to some of those flowers. That's that big flower motif down here. You can see, and again, this picture is kind of terrible, but I did this little section up here and so, and I got Emma's name in, and the pull of her last name. Anyways, it really is so pretty. Look at those pansies. They're so beautiful. The colors on this are just stunning. And I am using DMC. So this one's really beautiful. I love it. It's really, really pretty. This is one I've been wanting to start for a long time and I'm so glad that I finally started it. Okay, next project is Winter Comes from Heartstring Samplery. I am doing that black version with the little verse. And here, this is on a 32 count black linen. Here's my progress. So I, on this one, since there's so much snow and so much house, again, I like to jump around. So. I, I finished the roof, I finished the door, I added all these candles to the window, I finished the deer, added in a ton more snow, added in this cardinal, a bunch of the tree. So I would do like a length on the roof and a length in the on the house and then the length in the door and then a length of snow and then a length on the deer and then a length of snow and then a length on the tree or the cardinal and a length on, on the snow. Again, so I can just break up that snow and it's really starting to come together. I got the roof finished, the deer finished. I obviously don't have the tree finished, but I wanted to do the cardinal and so I did. And so I am finished, like these little deer are finished and I need to keep doing white. So I've started on the border. There's a little border that goes all the way around it with pine cones and berries and stuff. I still need to do, there's another little smoke plume that's very similar to this one that comes out of that chimney. Um, the candles all have little glows around them, so I need to add those. But I was so happy with my progress on this one. It's just going to be so cute. 
And it's so interesting because when I'm working on it, I can't see. So you see these little lines to distinguish and make the shiplap look. Um, when I'm stitching on it, I can't see it, but here I can see it so distinctly and I love it. It looks so good. You know how when you're stitching, you just lose, you kind of become, I don't know, immune to the details, I guess. And so it's so fun to look at it through a different lens and really see what it looks like. So love that progress. Okay, next one is Madame Chantilly Celebrate Christmas. This is one of the, her tiered trays. I started this, I think, back around Christmas time, maybe November. And so I, oh, my needle is stuck. Oh dear. Okay. So here we go. So I got all these little leaves finished. I added, um, really, I added a lot of red. This red, this is the cuff of a mitten. I added the red polka dots, the berries, finished these leaves, um, and then added this leaf and then there are little berries. And then this is the handle on the top of the little mug that says cocoa. So it really is so cute. I am doing this on 28 count limestone, one over one the DMC. It's really cute. So celebrate Christmas. All right, next. Oh, I was so excited about my progress on this one, guys. And a forest grew by Rosewood Manor. I've been working on this one since the beginning of the year, just a little bit here and there. Just for like an hour ish, maybe once or twice a week, kind of depends. All right, and my progress on this um, fabric. I am doing this on 36 count Barb's Blend from r and Here we go. Okay, so I, uh, let's see. So I was able to finish, um, kind of, I worked right here is what I did. So, oh, I think I did this tree too. So it might've been like these. I need to add this, the trunks to those little trees. There's that little mouse and that butterfly and that heart tree and those other, that little funky, this kind of reminds me of a Dr. Seuss tree, this one right here. And then you guys, this lemon tree, I love so much. And the other reason I love this lemon tree is that that is the bottom of the piece. So I've now reached that bottom edge, which is so motivating when you see some of those hard edges come together. So next time I work on this, I will for sure finish that corner and then I'll start to work over because um, this little tree right here is the edge of the big tree with the verse. Let me show you. So you see there's that little tree. So next I can start this big tree with the verse. And at that point, I'm pretty much halfway done, which is awesome because this seems so huge. So to think that I'm maybe 40%. 35% maybe. I don't know. That's so exciting. So, and a forest grew. I just love the variety of all of those trees. Oh, they're so good. Okay. Okay. Um, next one is Vict Victorine Dupin from Reflet des Sois. This is from the monthly boxes that she is releasing. This is from the January box, I think. And so this one... Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Make sure it was the right way. All right. Um, I don't remember what fabric this is on. Oh, yes, I do. It's hog bristle, 40 count hog bristle from Fox and Rabbit. And I'm using the called for Vera Soise. And so this is a really deep blue. It looks black on there, but it's so pretty. I love it. And there's like this mustard yellow, um, silk that the border is done out of and then little um, light blue accents. It's just so pretty. All right, so that was a new start. Okay, two left guys. Okay, inspiration. Oh, I love this one so much, but it is a lot. It's a lot, a lot. Those vines are no joke. So let me show you what I got done. This one is being um, stitched on 40 count white mustard from Baiju Designs. 
and here we go. So I just worked on vines. I did not have a whole ton of time to stitch. So I worked on vines from about here all the way over. So now that whole top is done, which makes me happy. So now I can go in and fill in all the little birds and flowers and stuff and do the border around. But yeah, all of those little vines, oh man. So, I love this one so much. So, inspiration from Rosewood Manor. Okay, then the last one. I do not have a final picture. Um, you can look it up. But this is, um, the last day of May was a Wednesday, and Wednesdays is um, Chatelaine Wednesday, so that's what I worked on. So, here is my Chatelaine. And this is um, White Nights in St. Petersburg. It is done on a, I think, 28 count fabric, um, opalescent Lugana. I am not sure who it's by. Um, I think maybe Silk Weaver, but here it is. So I worked on this corner, did some of those specialty stitches, road stitches, and Jessica stitch. Oh my goodness, sorry guys. Did some of the metallic stitching and then stitched the outline on those windows or on those towers, excuse me. So I have, um, there are beads to add into this and then I need to finish those. Let me show you the other side so you'll know what it will look like when it's done. There you go, sorry, I have some beading thread in there. So you can kind of see some of the beads in there there is. And then, yep, that's over one stitching, so I'll have to do that. Uh, that's better focus. So, oh, this one. All of my chatelaines are so pretty. I really fell back in love with them. Stitching um, them for Mania. And I am going to make it a point to continue stitching them. So I think going forward, I have, for the month of June, I have a bunch of new starts that I want to do. Um, I will pull those and show you. But I think I want to keep working on my Rose Quaker and my Veerland sampler. Um, and so before I was doing a length on my Veerland sampler day before I went and started stitching on my other stuff. And then Rose Quaker, I kind of started doing on Sundays, made that my Sunday stitch. So I think I'll keep do doing those two things. Then for Mania, I did Chatelaine Wednesdays. I think I will keep doing that. My biggest um, hang up with going into this, I mean, I guess there were a few I told you about earlier, but one of my problems was um, just switching. It just takes so long to switch, but I did great prep, which was key. Um, and so I think now that I've got all that prep done, it will be easier to switch projects because I've got it all set up for success. So... We'll see. We'll see how um, things go for this month. Okay. Um, so since Mania ended um, on Wednesday, because today's Friday, I have had a day to work on some other stuff. And my goal was to get as many things done as, um, as I can before I leave on vacation next week. So I'm in this frantic finish things um, from Mania. What will I get done? I don't know, because I think I might do a new start today. We'll see. Anyways, but first thing I got done is a Murder of Crows. This is the little berry one. It's just really cute, simple. Again, it didn't take me very long to finish. I just had to do the border and his little feet and then the berries. This is on a mystery, I think Joblin, because this fabric is so soft. But I think he will just make a cute little pillow. So one finish. Okay, I also worked on... Um, Eliza's French Birds from JBW yesterday. And I am almost done with this one. I just need to add in the little leaves right down here. Oh, there's my thread. Sorry, guys. So this is so pretty. And it was just such a fun, fast stitch. So I will hopefully finish this one today. Okay, let's do plans. So my plans... Um, like I mentioned, I am going on vacation next week. We're going to go see my daughter. 
Um, and so I always like to do one or two new starts um, when I'm on a trip. So this time I'm going to do Satsuma Street, Pretty Little Amsterdam. It's just so fun. Look at those yellows and oranges, those tulips down there, and the water, and the windmill, and the sun. Ugh. I just, I love these patterns so, so much. So that will be super fun. And I'm just going to do it on a, I think it's a 32 white Lugana. Okay, then I am also going to start um, this long dog Peccadillo. Um, I came out with these not too long ago. This one is called Clandestine. And I am going to do it on this blue fabric. It's a 40 count. Now this is a piece of fabric that I got from kind of a grab bag from number 12 Supply Co. That's an Australian dyer. Um, I placed an order with her. And if you remember, I think I talked about it last week or two weeks ago. From Australia, it came so fast. It was like a week. I was, I was super impressed. That was so fun. So there's not a color name because this was just in a grab bag, but um, I'm sure you can find the color on her website or on her Etsy shop. She's on Etsy. And then I'm going to use, now this might not turn out very good, but I'm going to try it. I am going to use this red-orange coral combo thread that I got from Live and Die LA. Oh, it is so messy. I obviously have not put it on a floss strap and braided it yet. But um, it has like kind of a orangey red, corally red. And I think that it is going to be really fun on this blue. Let me show you. It's a little dark. Anyways, so I'm excited to try that. It's just bright and fun and summery and it's just a little pattern. So I think that'll be fun. We'll try that. And then I am going to be a part of um, Pam's um, Stitch Along from Just Keep Stitching. Um, this is Simple Gifts Courage from Praiseworthy Stitches. And I'm going to do this on uh, Wayfarer's Cloak from um, Legacy Linens. Oh, that's the sticker right there. <laughs> anyway, so this pattern will fit on a fat eighth of um, this linen. Now, not a typical fat eighth. It has to be the Legacy because um, their fat eighths are bigger. So if you look, it is... I mean a square, it is big, whereas a typical fat eighth is a lot um, thinner. I think it's more like that-ish, roughly. So I, and the quality of this fabric is fantastic, so I'm super excited to do that. And then I am going to use two colors from um, Threadworks. So I don't remember the names, but I think um, Cranberry, and then I think, cause they don't put the names on there. Um, they have names, but they don't put them on their packaging, which is kind of silly, but okay. And I think this is like Kaylee something or Rose. I don't know. I'll put it in the description box. So uh, mm, mm, there we go. So this is just such a pretty, this looks darker than it is this red. It's just such a pretty pinky cranberry color. It's really, really beautiful. I mean that, yeah, actually that's looking pretty good up there and the variegation and it's really pretty. So I'm excited to start that. I have um, two friends that were our breast cancer survivors. And um, for one of them, I was there through the whole thing through her um, diagnosis to her chemo, went with her to chemo treatments. Um, and she's doing really well now and which is such a blessing because I know not everyone's so fortunate. And so, um, and then the other friend is someone that I worked with for a long time who I just adore. And so I'm going to stitch this, um, with them in mind and just thinking how, just how blessed, um, I am to know them and to have them in my lives and that they were able to beat that cancer, which is just so terrible. So that is another new start. Um, Pam is starting it on June 11th. 
So I've got a few days before I will start this and I probably won't get a ton done. That's okay. All right, let's do some treasures. I got a few of my fabric of the month clubs. So let me share those with you. First was from Baidu Designs, who is in Hungary. You can get um, sign up for her Fabric of the Month Club on Etsy. She has um, different sizes, different counts, different um, lengths. Like you can do a six month or you can do a year. I think you can do a three month too. Anyway, she always includes this pa uh, pattern and it's these A Year of Flowers. So here it is. She's so super pretty. And look at the floss. She always includes a gift thread. I love that. Okay, and the fabric, I get 40 count. This month it was marbled hazelnut. And so here we go. Um, it is maybe just a touch creamier than that. That modeling is fantastic though. It's so beautiful. This will be so perfect for a sampler. Yeah, I've got lots of shadows going on today, guys. It is kind of a dark and dreary day. You might have heard the thunder in the um, background not too long ago. So I love rainy days. <laughs> so it makes me happy, but it's maybe not perfect um, conditions to film in. Okay, next one is from Be Stitch Me. I am in both their color and neutral. Um, on their neutral, I get a 40 count burr doll. And so this is bronze age. And this piece of fabric, oh, that's not doing anything. Um... Okay, let me try to fold it. That will be better. Just that light. Okay, look at this. Oh, it's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. I have been dying to kit this up with something. And so now that I've shown you, I can. It's maybe just a touch warmer than it's showing. But Verdal is so soft and lovely. Oh, so that is Bronze Age. And then... I get a 28 count Lugana in the color club. Okay, you ready for this one? Okay, I'll show you the whole piece, then I'll fold it for the shadows. Okay, ba bam Whoa, that is a crazy piece of fabric. It is called fruit salad, and it's like a limey, yellowy green with those kind of magenta over and darker green. And see, there's even kind of purpley right there. I mean, that's pretty, uh, right there is pretty true. It is like, bam. But wouldn't this be fun for like a Halloween piece? It's really such a fun fabric. I love fabrics like this because they force me to think out of my box because this is not what I gravitate to. What do I gravitate to? The safe ones, right? And so um, I love these fabrics because it just, it makes me, be creative. So I am going to look for something to kit this up with because it's just so fun. All right. So that was my Be Stitch Me fabric of the month. Then I got my Atomic Ranch fabric of the month from um, Crafty Grimalkin. Um, and she has a website and is on Etsy. And this one is Eucalyptus. And this is a beautiful piece. Yep looks about like that. Beautiful modeling, beautiful green. Ah, such fun fabrics this month. Okay. And then I bought a pattern on Etsy. Now, I don't know if you've heard of Quaint Rose Needle Arts. She has a, she has a floss tube and she is just like the cutest, sweetest little thing. Um, but she does reproduction samplers. She has a few original designs and she, showed this sampler that she was reproducing and I fell in love with it. And I was so, she's been showing it for, I don't know, a few months. And I was so anxious for her to come out with it. And she finally did. And it is called Edith E. Nunn, 1884. Okay. Those purple birds and that flower basket. I love it so, so much. So this is of course going to go to the top of the Stitch Very Soon list, which there are a billion projects battling for that, <laughs> but it's just so pretty. 
All right. So that's what I have for you today. Um, I probably will not shoot another video until after we are back from vacation. So hopefully I will have a lot of progress for you. I'll be back on my every two week ish schedule. Um, I have to admit it was fun to do it every week. Um, but May, my month of May lent itself to that because May, I just wasn't as busy. Um, I didn't have as much going on. The summer is going to be crazier. My daughter, my oldest daughter comes home from school the end of June. So that's exciting. Um, my other daughter is in Florida, so we're going to go visit her. Um, like I said, next week, we've got another um, trip planned in the end of July. So it's going to be a busy summer. We've got lots going on. So I will get on here as, oh, not as much as I can, but hopefully I can stick to a two-week-ish schedule. So we'll see. We'll keep our fingers crossed. But I hope you're all doing well. I hope that you are stitching what you want and that it's going well that the frogs don't come to visit too much and until next time your mission should you choose to accept it is to stitch bye everyone.